You haven't been to jail? <laughs> no. No jail? No, uh, not re yet. Rehab? No. No rehab. Amanda <laughs> Bynes, what kind of a starlet are you? I know. What's wrong with me? Brand new reports say former Nickelodeon star Amanda Bynes is about to check into rehab. I need help. You don't need help? We, we pay for you, Amanda. You look gorgeous. Hold on, hold on. Right here, right here. No, come towards me. No, come towards me. Can I just walk towards me? Can I just get a shot of you walking towards me? You have to delete that one in my face. I need you to look beautiful. It's a bad shot. All right, please. Amanda, anything you want to say at all? We look at celebrities as if they're the lucky ones, who get to live their lives rich and famous. And rarely do we ever examine fame as a nightmare. But the story of Amanda Bynes examines the true reality of young fame and stardom, which is a nightmare that I don't wish upon anyone. The pressure to be perfect in front of the public eye. Former Nickelodeon star Amanda Bynes is about to check into rehab. We know that Amanda Bynes' doctors are very concerned right now. Amanda Bynes officially charged with her DUI. Amanda is certainly not in a good place. Amanda Bynes was arrested in West Hollywood. Amanda Bynes may be a schizophrenic. A life forced on you as a child without your consent. You started in, in the business when you were, what, six, seven years old? I was seven. Yeah, so and, and you, you grew up, you've been very successful, but I was thinking you grew up on television. And a lot of us have to go through these awkward stages in our life. You had to do that on TV. And millions of people criticizing your every move. Amanda, 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 Amanda Bynes. Amanda Bynes. It's a recipe for disaster, or rather what the public is hoping for all along, a total breakdown. But the life of Amanda Bynes is not just a tragic story of a fallen Hollywood star, but about what happens when one's choices are completely taken away from them. Her parents are going to make a move to create a conservatorship for Amanda because she is unable to care for herself. And when there's little forgiveness or help for mental health. Turns out she just wants the perfect shot. You have to delete that one in my face. I need to look beautiful. It's a bad shot. All right, please. Well, if Amanda doesn't think she looks good, she might be a little crazy. Oh, wait. You look gorgeous. Hold on, hold on. Right here, right here. No, come towards me. No, come towards me. Can I just walk towards me? Can I just get a shot of you walking towards me? There are no angels in hell, but there are certainly victims and perpetrators. And it's hard not to see Amanda Bynes as a victim of circumstance, thrown into a life she was never prepared for and maybe never wanted. Thank you so much for entertaining our children because it gives us a little free time. And is now picking up the pieces of a broken childhood and ruined dreams that were never hers in the first place. Hi friends and fellow internet acquaintances. Welcome or welcome back to another video on my channel. I have a different background. I'm trying something new. Let me know if you like it. And I try and say this always in my videos, but sometimes I forget and I'm really sorry about that. But with these types of topics, especially really sensitive topics about mental health and childhood trauma, please be respectful in the comments of the subject of this video. And as always, I'm only gonna be reporting on what's known about the story of Amanda Bynes. So I'm going to try and be as respectful, fair, and objective as possible. But I think this story really covers a deeper subject about what happens when children are forced into a life that they never consented to having. Nowadays, there are so many children who are being pushed into a life of internet fame without their consent and forced to live a life in front of the public eye. So I think it's really important now more than ever to examine stories of the past and public figures where this happened to them as well to really know how dangerous this kind of life can be for such a young child. 
But before we get into this video, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. After being on this platform for almost three years now, I always want to strive for the best quality videos for all of you. And with the help of Skillshare, I'm able to learn more things to improve my video quality. Skillshare is an online platform with thousands of creative and useful classes for anyone that wants to start something new or refine their skills. Lately, I've been wanting to learn more about after after Effects, and Jordi Vanderpat's classes have been really helping me at this. I went from viewing After Effects like it was almost a rocket science for a dumb person like me, to now feeling way more confident in how to use After Effects in my videos. With Skillshare, you can invest in yourself and your personal growth, and the first 1,000 of my viewers to sign up will receive one month free with the link in my description. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and I hope you guys find as much joy in the platform as I do. Amanda Laura Bynes was born in Thousand Oaks, California on April 3rd, 1986. Her mom, Lynn Oregon, was a dental assistant and her father, Rick Bynes, was a dentist. Bynes was heavily encouraged by her father to try improv and acting. Are your dad in show business? You say he knows that? No, well, he, he likes to do comedy and so, you know, I, I've always liked, liked doing comedy. Her mother told People Magazine in 2004 when she was three, she would put on my clothing and be silly and try and get attention from her brother and sister. And because of this, her parents thought she would be great at acting, which is interesting to push a three-year-old into acting at such a young age. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's great as an extracurricular activity, but if you're pushing your child to make money from the age of three through the entertainment business, it's a little bit different and a lot of pressure to put on a really young child. Rick encouraged Amanda to get into the world of acting by helping her write routines about her family life. He also sent her to comedy camp, helped her audition for commercials, and in general was acting as her manager. Which I mean is already a little bit of a red flag. To me, personally, when parents are so heavily involved in trying to make their kid become a star, that usually is not the most healthy relationship, in my opinion, but what can I say? Amanda got an agent by the age of seven, and that's really when her professional acting career took off, especially when she appeared in an ad for a bunch of crunch candies. What was your first gig at seven? What'd you do? Um. It was actually a commercial for Nestle's Bunch of Crunch candy. They're popable and handy for lunch and they're just handy. When she was 10 years old, her dad signed her up for a comedy camp at the Los Angeles Laugh Factory. You started out the same way I did. I understand that you started out at like the Laugh stand Factory. Up, yeah. Are you a stand-up comedian? Yeah, well, my well, my dad saw like a an article that you know kids could do a comedy camp at the Laugh Factory. Ten-year-old Amanda Burns. <laughs> While there, she performed acts in front of comedy legends such as Richard Pryor, and Bynes said she was discovered at the camp's graduation by Nickelodeon producers. And so it was really fun, and then there was like a graduation night, and that's where the producers of the show, like Brian Robbins and Dan Schneider, came on the show and they saw me there. So and that was it, you just got discovered right off of the comedy camp. Yeah. It was producers Brian Robbins and Dan Schneider who found Bynes at the comedy camp and brought her on to the show All That, which was a sketch comedy style show that was really popular from 1996 to 2000. You having a good time on all that? Yes, it's very fun because everybody's very nice and very funny. Amanda quickly became one of the most popular cast members on the show with segments like Ask Ashley, Whatever, and Captain Tantrum. And throughout the show, Amanda was given more and more screen time. <laughs> And I have to say, though I don't necessarily think Amanda should have been on a huge popular TV show at such a young age, she is such a charming, adorable kid in these shows. You can tell she definitely has a natural talent and charisma about her. But because Amanda was so well-liked and so popular on all that, she was given her very own TV show called The Amanda Show which was also a live action sketch comedy type of show, which really seemed to be something she excelled at. 
What do you have there? What is it there? And the show was a massive hit on its debut in 1992, boosting Bynes' fame and quickly becoming one of Nickelodeon's highest rated programs. Amanda Bynes played really popular characters on the show, like Penelope Taint, Hello, people. I'm Penelope Taint, Amanda's number one fan. Judge Trudy, and Crazy Courtney. <laughs> And for all three seasons of The Amanda Show, Amanda Bynes won the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards for Favorite TV Actress. Thank you so much. Um, first of all, I want to thank Dan Schneider for all he's believing in me, and I want to thank Brian Robbins, Mike Tolan, and Mike Goldman, and I want to thank my family, I want to thank my wonderful parents for always driving me, and Always supporting. With the massive success of the show and the increasing fan base, it seemed like the show could have gone on for years, but it abruptly ended in 2002. While Amanda seemed normal on the outside, handling her newfound fame fairly well, you never really know what's going on with someone until you're directly involved in their personal life. Chelsea Brummett, Bynes' co-star, gave an inside look into Amanda's troubled childhood. Brummett worked with Amanda on the series All That and had some interesting stories to tell about what Amanda was like behind the scenes. The TV actress told Radar, I found her to be cold. I think maybe she felt like, who are these people? This is my legacy. Her persona felt like you'd shake her hand and she'd barely touch your fingers. She was closed off to everyone. You'd ask her a question and she'd give you a quick answer to end the conversation. Brummett also told Radar that she remembered hearing that Amanda's father, Rick, was extremely controlling. She was always defiant with her dad, but she tried to hide things from her dad. She always seemed like she was trying to hide things. They would butt heads. I don't know if this is just me, but Amanda Bynes' dad gives me major red flags. He tried to create this entire entertainment career for Amanda from an extremely young age. From their own statements, Amanda was only three years old when they tried to get her into the entertainment industry. She had no consent or control over the entire thing. And then when Amanda did create this career that her father had envisioned for her, he and other adults around her became hyper vigilant and watchful of her, not allowing her to make choices that they deemed unfit or as something that could negatively impact her career. And you have to wonder what that can do to a young and developing brain, unable to make your own decisions and unable to have virtually any control over your life. What's the cost of fame in your opinion? I think having to Oh, it's People like having to be involved in your personal life. But once Amanda left Nickelodeon, she was able to explore more mature roles, and it seemed that Bynes had a promising acting career ahead of her. Amanda made her first feature film debut in the 2002 Frankie Muniz-led comedy Big Fat Liar, which was directed by Dan Schneider. You know Big Fat Liar? Yes. Big Fat Liar was fantastic. I want a sequel. Fresh off of that film's success, Bynes soon became a leading lady in romantic comedies. While Amanda's career trajectory continued upward, her family situation only worsened, which I can only imagine greatly impacted her personal life. In 2003, Amanda's agent, her manager, and her attorney were all fired by her parents. Again, major red flag here. Her parents basically cut out every other adult within Amanda's life besides themselves and they completely controlled her career with now no outside voices, no outside input just very concerning in my opinion. This mass firing came only a year after Amanda sought legal emancipation 
from her parents, who were absolutely furious when they discovered that the reps had kept this from them. And if you don't know what emancipation is, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not gonna give you the best legally terms, but it's basically how a minor can legally become an adult, at least financially, and have more control over their lives. This is very common in the entertainment industry because minors are making a lot of money and they want to be in control of that money and their life and what projects they do. They want to be able to sign contracts with out their parents involved and Amanda allegedly supposedly wanted this for herself so she can be more in control of her career I'm assuming and when her parents found out they fired everybody who helped her do this so once again she was isolated alone and without any control over her life. A representative on the old Bynes team talked about this mass firing, saying they were pretty eloquent about it. They were like, you work for us, not her. But in many ways, that's not true. She was evolving as an actress and as an individual and had her own ideas about where she wanted to be. So that relationship started to evolve. And I was looking at the relationship as much more direct than the parents wanted me to. So in layman's terms, it seems like the parents did not in any way want to give up control of Amanda's life, career, and let's say it, money. And around this time, Amanda Bynes reportedly leaned on producer Dan Schneider for support. Lisa Lillen, Dan Schneider's wife, said she was spending a lot of time with us, but she never left her family's house. But of course, a lot of people have also speculated on this very close relationship between Dan Schneider, adult producer, and Amanda Bynes, child actress at the time. Only one way to cure your class. What do I have to do? Tickle yourself. Hey! Tickle yourself. Oh, but I don't want to tickle my There are tons of photos and videos of them being very close together, seeming very comfortable with one another. There's the infamous video of them in a hot tub together. And in general, the relationship made the public feel very uncomfortable. And I'm sure this was just such a hard and confusing time for Amanda. Her parents seemed extremely controlling over her life. And then all the other adults within her close circle were fired and taken away from her. Dan Schneider, the producer, producer who discovered her was probably the only other adult that she was close with in her life. And I'm sure in a lot of ways that made her see him as a parental figure of sorts. But even if all the creepy allegations of Dan Schneider are false, even just the fact that Dan Schneider is a producer who has made a lot of money off of Amanda already makes it so that her best interest is not his best interest. And that in some way, Dan Schneider still had an interest in exploiting her because that brought him money. So at this point in Amanda's life, it really seems like there wasn't an adult in her life who truly had her best interest at heart, or who wasn't making money off of her in some way. But a source who knew the family closely stated that Rick was the prime source of Amanda's anger during that period. Her parents were very, very strict with Amanda. Her dad called all the shots and was very controlling. He's a bad guy. Yeah, he'll do that. Yeah, my mom's a good guy in the family. Well, good girl, whatever. Were your folks strict when you were growing up? They actually were very strict. Yeah. Uh, in a good way, though. My parents yeah. never let me go to the mall alone or with friends. I had to go with my parents. All with friends? You couldn't even go with I friends? I couldn't even go with friends! The year 2004 was relatively quiet for Bynes on the big screen. She remained focused on her lead role as Holly Tyler in the Will Calhoun and Dan Schneider co-created television sitcom What I Like About You. Around this time, Amanda, who was just 17 years old, was dating her co-star Nick Zano, who was 24 years old. And people did not like this age gap and criticized Amanda for it. 
at the time for whatever reason, even though obviously the guy should have been the one who was criticized. I can only imagine that maybe Amanda felt like the walls were closing in on her. Everyone was controlling her life and judging her decisions. Not that she made the best decisions, but did anyone as a 17 year old make the best decisions? I want to make people laugh and, you know, be goofy. It's like, uh, that to me is like the greatest joy. In 2005, Bynes portrayed Piper Pinwheeler in the 20th century Fox film Robots. Being in a voiceover movie, it's so odd just because you don't have your body to rely on. DreamWorks Pictures released the 2006 romantic comedy film She's the Man, starring Bynes opposite newcomer Channing Tatum. And although the film received mixed reviews from critics, Bynes was praised for her performance. But during the 2018 interview with Paper Magazine, Bynes admitted that her role in the film eventually had a negative effect on her mental health. When the movie came out and I saw it, I went into a deep depression for four to six months because I didn't like how I looked when I was a boy, Bynes had said. I had no idea if I could do it or not, and even during it, I was like, what am I doing? But it was, you know, luckily it was, um, it was a learning experience and it was fun and funny, so. Now, between takes or when you at lunch and things, did you kind of keep it up as a guy when no, you are dressed up? I was so tired, I think, of doing the voice that, you know, like, I, I wouldn't do it at that point, but, um... But it was really fun and I, even when I was off, like dressing, even when I was a guy, I mean, even though I was uncomfortable, I still had fun and I wish I was a girl the whole time because then it was me, but, but that's what makes this movie different. But following She's the Man, Amanda catapulted into her most significant role to date, the 2007 musical romantic comedy Hairspray. And Amanda worked alongside a star-studded cast consisting of John Travolta, Michelle Pfeiffer, Christopher Walken, Brittany Snow, Queen Latifah, and Zac Efron. I love doing comedies. I think it's because I prefer to make people laugh. And, you know, I don't want to sit there and have people say, you know, look how beautiful you are, even though, of course, that's always, no, nice to hear. But, like, it's like, I want to make people laugh and, you know, be goofy. It's like, uh, that to me is, like, the greatest joy in the world. Bynes teamed up with Stephen Berries to create her own fashion line called Deer, consisting of apparel and accessories. But the line was cut short when Stephen Berries filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 2008. It seems like from the years 2005 to 2008, Amanda worked a lot on a ton of successful projects. But soon after, Amanda began to what people call spiral, though it's really no wonder that that happened. I mean, I barely post once a month and I still <laughs> struggle with burnout sometimes. So to be doing that many projects back to back and working consistently as an actress since at least the age of seven, of course you're going to burn off and need time to discover yourself and take a break. I mean, it's inevitable, but the adults in Amanda's life wanted her to continue working away and continue being their cash cow, milking all of her success and working her until she fell apart. In 2010, Amanda co-starred alongside the then relatively unknown, but now well-known Emma Stone, that all rhymed, in the teen romantic comedy film Easy A. There was something really funny. Everybody has met that girl who is a type A personality and just wants to be right and wants to be better than everyone. So she's sort of a fun character to play. The film received positive reviews for Stone's and Bynes performances and was also a major financial success. In the same year, Bynes started filming the comedy Hall Pass. Bynes was to play a babysitter with a lusty interest in one of the main dude characters, but she ended up getting replaced with Alexandria Daddario? Daddario? So sorry, I don't remember how to say your name. And there were stories from Insider that suggested that Amanda Bynes wasn't getting along with other cast members and wasn't remembering her lines. And eventually, Bynes spoke out about her time on set. During the 2018 Paper Magazine interview, she remembered literally tripping out when she first saw herself in scenes from Hall Pass. She thought her arm looked so fat because it was in the foreground or whatever. 
whatever. I remember rushing off set and thinking, oh my God, I look so bad, she shared. Amanda revisits her past in the interview talking about her drug use, where uh, she quit the film Hall Pass in 2010 because she was addicted to alcohol on set and she couldn't focus on memorizing her lines. She was also taking money and it seems like mentally Bynes was having a harder and harder time with the pressure of Hollywood stardom and the career that she found herself in. And mid-2010, everything came to a halt. Does the name Amanda Bynes ring a bell? Well, this past Friday it sure did, as the young Hollywood actress announced her retirement via Twitter. In June of 2010, Bynes surprised the world by announcing her retirement on Twitter, saying that she was quitting acting at the peak of her career. Career. She wrote from a now deleted account, Being an actress isn't as fun as it may seem. If I don't love something anymore, I stop doing it. I don't love acting anymore, so I've stopped doing it. I know 24 is a young age to retire, but you heard it here first. Yeah, maybe she was only 24, but if you remember, she'd been doing this since she was like three or four. That's like 20 years in the industry, 20 years in a career by the age of 24. I mean, that's longer than most people's careers in any industry. Kind of makes sense that she would have grown tired of acting. And following the Hall Pass debacle, as well as the Twitter tweet, Amanda Bynes' public fall from grace began. In 2012, Amanda Bynes got arrested for a DUI for the first time. Amanda Bynes officially charged with her DUI after she clipped a sheriff's deputy cruiser with her black BMW at around 3 a.m. Amanda Bynes was arrested in West Hollywood for a DUI after sideswiping a car. In 2012, she was also charged with two hit and Runs. Amanda Bynes is in a bind again. The 26 year old actress has been charged with two counts of hit and run. Amanda, how you party too much? These many arrests and charges is something that's really hard to come back from. And I also think it's harder for big celebrities who have major scandals to recover from it in the way that other people might be able to because their mistakes gain way more attention and notoriety than the average person. And they're shamed for it so much that I think it would be extremely hard not to internalize that and have it contribute to a negative spiral of sorts. However, Amanda told People Magazine that she was doing amazing and moving to New York City, where she planned to start a fashion line. In November of 2012, Amanda threatened to sue In Touch Magazine for claiming that she walked around a New York tanning salon completely Naked. I'm not troubled. I don't get naked in public. I'm 26, a multimillionaire, and retired. Please respect my privacy, which I think is totally fair. It seems like she was just trying to be normal and figure out what she wanted to do with her life and wanted people to sort of forget about her former career. But unfortunately, at that time especially, early 2000s era, people wanted the child star to train wreck trope. They wanted to continue following her and publicize about her falling apart or acting crazy. Amanda, do you something you have on the Yeah. And unfortunately, Amanda couldn't escape from that. This is really random, but this entire story reminds me of the song Brutal by Olivia Rodrigo, or at least this one quote from the song. Um, I was listening to it this morning and I was just like reminded of it where she says, and I'm so tired that I might quit my job, start a new life, and they'd all be so disappointed because who am I if not exploited? In 2013, Bynes also had another run-in with the law, this time on the East Coast. Bynes was charged with reckless endangerment in marijuana possession after she was found smoking in her Manhattan apartment building lobby. When officers entered her 36th floor apartment, she allegedly threw a bomb 
out the window, which is extremely dangerous if it were to hit someone. Amanda Bynes gets arrested again. Amanda, anything you want to say at all? Story is that you threw up and items out the window. Is that true, Amanda? Guys, let me get in the car. During this time, she made a few court appearances wearing very colorful and disheveled wigs, large sunglasses, and piercings. Amanda Bynes, I mean, kinda slay, sorry. But what's not slay, sorry I'm laughing, is on May 26th, in a seemingly unprovoked attack, she tweeted to Rihanna, Chris Brown, you, because you're not pretty enough. No one wants to be your lover. I almost named my new dog Rihanna. And Rihanna soon responded, tweeting, You see what happens when they cancel intervention? Then, in July of 2013, Ventura County Sheriff's deputies detained Amanda after she allegedly started a small fire in a stranger's driveway in Thousand Oaks. She was hospitalized under a 72-hour mental evaluation hold, and Amanda Bynes' parents filed for conservatorship over Amanda shortly after her hospitalization. Okay, what's on fire? It's, uh, the, it's like a small piece of cloth and uh, and a, a gasoline tank. We also know that her parents are going to make a move to create a conservatorship for Amanda because she is unable to care for herself and frankly, she's a danger to others. If you don't know what a conservatorship is, it's basically when one person becomes a legal guardian for another person and can take control of their business, their finances, and their personal life. So the families are very powerless. So one of the interventions that we have to do and help families do is go to the court system to be able to prove that their loved one is so out of control, that is so disturbed, that the court then puts them in charge of their family, you know, just like they did with Britney Spears. So basically, Amanda became exactly where she was during her childhood. And I mean, I don't know Amanda's parents personally. I don't want to just label them as awful people. But I mean, from multiple reports, they intensely controlled Amanda's childhood and now took control over Amanda's entire life. Do you think that it was a good idea to put Amanda under a conservatorship? or do you think there's better ways? Especially if you're in the mental health field, I'd love to know your thoughts. But after a stint in rehab, Amanda was back out in the world, and by September of 2014, she was booked again for a DUI charge after the police determined that she was under the influence of a controlled substance. Unfortunately for Amanda Bynes, and actually for a lot of people who have addiction issues, as you know, Dr. Drew, you're an expert in this area, most people who have addiction issues, it's a lifelong battle. You're constantly having to deal with that, dealing with triggers, using your coping skills, and it's like a landslide. If one thing happens, your whole entire treatment could go out the window and you're not sober again. You have to start over. Amanda's public behavior began to raise concerns again. Eyewitnesses encountered Bynes ordering food at LA Buns and Company in West Hollywood, but the former actress had no money to pay for her food. So I don't have any cash, Bynes said, before taking taking her drink and leaving without paying. The star was found walking alone all day and was talking to herself. And an eyewitness spotted Amanda at LAX talking to herself again. An employee at an LAX restaurant posted a snap of Bynes to Instagram, eating at the restaurant she worked at with the caption, Yeah, that's Amanda Bynes. I talked to her. She's effing crazy. I kind of feel bad for her. She later added, she started putting on tons of makeup and making weird faces and talking to herself. She's not well. The following day, Amanda, who had a bandage under her eye, was found walking along the Upper East Side. And people who saw Amanda said that she seemed very paranoid and was speaking to inanimate objects. Are you okay? Are you sure? Is your eye okay? It looks hurt. Bye, All of this behavior was early October 2014, and later that month, Amanda Bynes posted on Twitter and accused her father of both emotionally and 
sexually abusing her. Her father, Rick Vines, who has been accused of by Amanda of physically and verbally harming her. And the next day, Bynes took back her allegations, saying, My dad never did any of those things. The microchip in my brain made me say those things, but he's the one that ordered them to microchip me. Amanda, I love Amanda. Do you regret what you said about your dad this morning? Amanda, do you regret the claims you made about your dad? Yeah, watch out. You're gonna see your dad? Amanda, do you regret what you said about your dad? Really? 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 In my opinion, we don't allow enough space, privacy, and respect for those clearly dealing with severe mental health issues in the public eye. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. Really great. Following her second consecutive conservatorship, Amanda remained out of the spotlight for a few years. And fast forward to 2018, Amanda received her associate's degree in merchandise product development and announced her intentions to start a bachelor's degree program, which is incredible because since childhood, Amanda has expressed an interest in fashion and art. In 1999, when she appeared on the Howie Mandel show, Amanda Amanda brought drawings of her designs and even speculated on what she'd one day call her fashion line. Well, I want to be in like a fashion designer. I love to draw. I brought you a few pictures like oh, the show. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is like a girl. I don't know if you want to like. Can that. you see this? Can David's camera see this? Oh wow! And, over, and then okay. I wow. drew. It's oh, Sally Field. That's Sally Field. Wow. So these. And are, I have like a few more. Is this what you want to pursue? You want to actually design clothes? Yeah. Well, so that'd be cool, you know, like Amanda Laura Ware or something. That's her middle name. That would, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. That would be cool. <laughs> yeah. That would be Amanda Laura or Ware. A B C A. You know, Donna Karen, New York, Amanda Bynes, California. That'd be cool. Wow. I you don't really know. thought this out. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> now, pretty you, sad. <laughs> no, it's not. Which is so sweet that that's now what she's finally pursuing as a career choice that she's been able to make herself. And after taking a break from social media, Amanda's mental health seemed to be on the mend. She enrolled at the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising, aka FITM. I've been going to school lately, fashion yeah. school FITM, and I love it. I've learned how to sew, I make patterns, okay. and I want to start a clothing line in the future. So FITM has been helping me with that. In 2018, Bynes graced the cover of Paper Magazine. Bynes revealed that she had been sober for four years with the help of her parents. Regarding her adult addiction, Amanda revealed that her addiction began after reading an article in a magazine that called Adderall the new skinny pill. My advice to anyone who is struggling with substance abuse would be to be really careful because drugs can really take a hold of your life. And despite her past, in the interview, Amanda remained optimistic about her future. I think that's kind of how I go about life now. Like, what's there to lose? I have no fear of the future. I've been through the worst and came out the other end and survived it. So I feel like it's only up from here. A source told us in December of 2018 that Amanda was feeling better than she had been for quite some time. But in early 2019, it was reported that Amanda had to seek treatment again after reliving her days in the public eye. This time around, she realized herself after the recent Paper Magazine beautiful interview and spread that she really wasn't feeling like herself all of a sudden and, and that she wanted to address that. She wanted to address it right away before going back into show business and exploring show business again. And it was her decision and her choice to uh, address the situation, seek treatment. Then on September 10th of 2019, Amanda joined Instagram. Hey guys, I'm on Instagram now, she wrote while living in a sober facility. And then on February 14th of 2020, Amanda announced a surprise engagement. She posted an Instagram photo of her wedding ring with a caption, engaged to the love of my life. And a few hours later, she shared a photo of Paul Michael, her fiance with her followers. It's believed that the couple, who met while attending Alcoholics Anonymous, had been dating for a few months when they became engaged. And the couple has had a lot of back and forth of breaking up and getting back together. There was even one time when they posted about Amanda being pregnant, but then her lawyer, David Esquibias, 
I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong, made a statement saying that Amanda was not pregnant. Many media outlets have just been informed that Amanda is in fact not pregnant and will not be expecting her first child. According to E! News, Amanda's attorney, David Esquibius, has officially spoken out, confirming the news saying, quote, Amanda is not pregnant and she is sheltering in a safe location. But despite this weird public back and forth, Amanda and her fiance Michael continued to stay together. Then in February of 2022, Amanda filed to end her conservatorship after nearly nine years in the conservatorship. The filing states that Bynes desires to live free of any constraint after transitioning from a structured community for women to an independent living environment. She has also consistently tested negative for illicit substances in her system, per the documents. Her attorney stated that Bynes believed her condition was improved and protection of the court was no longer necessary. Attorneys for her parents stated that they supported her in ending it, thank God for that at least, and the conservatorship was officially terminated on March 22, 2022. Following the end of the conservatorship, Amanda's lawyer told People Magazine that she was just really excited decided to move in with her fiance and really happy that her parents supported her ending the conservatorship. I want to thank you all so much for your love and support. Peace out. On April 27th, Amanda and her fiance had an argument that was made public and resulted in the police being called to their home. Michael called the police around 2.30 a.m. and alleged that Bynes had taken some of his pills. Early the following morning, Bynes posted a video on her Instagram story where she claimed, Paul told me that he stopped taking his medicines. I looked at his phone and he was looking at mom and son. He vandalized his mom's home. He broke all of her pictures and put salmon under her bed. His behavior is alarming and I'm afraid of what he'll do. I forgot to mention, I found Paul's stash of crap he's been using for the past six months. He needs serious help. I kicked him out of my house. But Michael took to his own Instagram account soon after saying he did not know what the F she was talking about. In wake of the incident, Amanda issued a public apology to her fiance. Correction, Paul looked up MILFs. Moms and sons just popped up. Also, I went to CVS, bought a test. Paul tested clean. Paul's clean. Also, I had something in my teeth in the last video. In early July of 2022, Page Six reported that Bynes and Michael had broken off their engagement. The pair, however, remained in a relationship. And in the last report on September 3rd of 2022, the couple appeared to be still in a relationship, though not engaged anymore. For now, Amanda's future is still unclear. In 2020, Amanda suggested that she may be launching her long-awaited fashion line and even discussed the possibility of a fragrance line. I want to start a clothing line in the future. So Fidem has been helping me with that. Other than that, I hike, I go spinning, take spinning classes. But it seems that, at least at this moment, there's no set release date for Amanda's brand. Though overall, she does seem to be in a better place mentally and physically. But at the end of this video, I do want to reiterate that we should never expect anyone to be perfect. Mental health, addiction, are extremely hard things to fight and to recover from, and we shouldn't expect perfection from binds or criticize her or others so heavily for their ups and downs. Life isn't always pretty and perfect, and we should stop expecting that from people in the public eye. Anyways, my camera ran out of batteries before I could film the final end of this video, so I can't do my usual outro in this video, but if you made it all the way to the end, End of the video thank you so much i really appreciate you wanting to watch that much of a video of mine and if you made it all the way to the end comment your favorite olivia rodrigo line or leave a shooting star emoji so i know you made it all the way to the end and can like your comment anyways um i hope that you're doing well and i'll see you in the next video bye